Hello. Welcome back from the break. Uh, I'm Steve Smoot from Corelight. And I wanted to present on programming for people who are relatively new to Zeek. Uh, last year, we had this awesome session where Seth went through live uh, Zeek scripting. And that's very cool, but almost nobody has as much scripting experience as Seth does. So I thought you'd like to see the approach of a relative newbie. You know, uh, I'll give you some tips on how I looked stuff up, mistakes I made, et cetera. And I did this by recording myself making uh, a script. So I tried to make an entry for the Zeek uh, programming contest, uh, package contest. And I instrumented my make file so that every time I tested my code, it would save a copy. And so then I could go, go back through it and show you every step. So expect to see a lot of mistakes. So I'm getting started, right? I have this make file, but I need to actually prove out that my environment is correct and you know I can actually run Zeek properly and just get the framework of a script. And so uh, my tip here is you go and you look at the, uh, the scripts that ship with Zeek, right? And you'll see that they have a sort of standard structure, right? They have a comment at the top, they declare some module, and then they uh, have some event handling. And so since really I'm just testing things out here, I just created a Zeek init that says, hello world, uh, called the module app ID. I'll, throughout the presentation, I'll sort of explain what I'm doing rather than diving into it at the, at the front. But, uh, and I ran that and actually it worked. So that was cool. So my environment was fine. And then I, the purpose of the script is to label connections with what app I think they are, right? Uh, I've got a bunch of different ideas for how to do that, uh, pulled from some public sources and a little bit from the Zeek uh, info. Um, and so I'm gonna wanna extend the con log. And so I grepped for redef and con, because I figured I'd find some code that was rede redefining. Uh, the con log to add a field. And I found code that I've highlighted there. Now, uh, I, I would say change it to app, but uh, what I'm gonna do in these slides is, uh, since it's really hard to look at code, especially code as it changes, as I'm highlighting you know, what I'm gonna be talking about. So either on the current slide or on the next slide. So usually there'll be mistakes in what's highlighted, just as a, a tip. Um, if we were doing this live, I'd probably have people shouting out and not have the highlighting and like throw t-shirts at you or something. Oh, well. So anyway, so I found this code and ran it. And it didn't crash, but it didn't add anything to the con log. Uh, so then I realized that, well, I didn't tell it to log. So I changed this, uh, that ampersand log at the end so that the field would get logged. And I ran it again. And it still didn't log it. So then I you know, looked at some other uh, examples and realized I was changing the wrong thing. So I was changing the connection records. The connection record comes from the Z core into script land um, and contains a bunch of other records and fields that you can do stuff with, right? Uh, what I actually wanted was to extend con info. And so uh, once I extended con info and uh, set the, the uh, oh, and changed uh, where I was storing it. So on the previous slide, this said C dollar app and now it's C dollar con app. So I'm changing the con record within the connection uh, and then the app field there. And so that actually worked. So I got a con log, had an app that said, hello world. All right, so one of my sources uh, for ideas for how to tag applications is there's this uh, network DPI um, public uh, resource on, on Git that has a bunch of IP addresses and what apps they are. And so my idea was, well, two data structures. One is just a quick check, is this an IP address I care about? And then the second one that you know, presumably is less efficient, that is a table of uh, IP addresses and what their actual apps are. So I created uh, a set of nets and a table of uh, mapping nets to strings. And uh, then I just ran it to see if I was declaring things correctly and I wasn't. Um, so first thing you need to know is indexes when you declare a table, I'll go in square brackets. Um, so that seemed pretty straightforward once I noticed it. So I went ahead and did some more code, which was to actually uh, do a lookup. And so I created an event for when connections go away and looked for um, is the originating IP uh, one of the ones I care about? And if so, what's the value? And is the destination IP one that I care about? If so, I'll put in the value. And the idea here is we're gonna 
we, we want to look from the most specific to the least, right? And so uh, this is viewed as a very high quality source. So it's the first one I'm checking against. Um, but I wanted to protect myself in the future. Maybe I'll have some other events that are even more high quality. And so at the top of this, I check to see if app is already set and return if it is. And so that's basically the structure on, on this. That, you know, the first part of my code that is setting the app, they win. Everything else after that is perceived as lower quality. So I ran that and that actually worked. So cool. But as, it, as I ran it, I was like, oh, well, what's gonna happen if I mess up and something is in nets, but is not in net table. So I just quickly edited zkinit to run a test for something that wasn't there. And yeah, uh, it totally bails. Uh, so that, uh, that is definitely something I wanna avoid. So I put in some code to say, well, do we have the same number of entries in both tables? I mean, I could be really sophisticated and check them all, but this seemed like a good quick check. Uh, and then if so, you know, give a warning and exit, but um, you know, you need to give an exit or return value. So I added that. Okay, so now I've got a check and yeah, uh, there was a glitch with that, sorry. So, um, I'm going to have more than one entry in the table. So again, formatting. Oh yeah, how do you have, um, you know, how do you initialize it with more than one thing? Uh, so yes, we just add a comma and then you have a subnet. But then I messed up. I put in the IP address, not a subnet. So uh, two fixes to fix that. And then I realized, especially for any of you who saw Nick Hurley talk yesterday, the input framework was a much better idea than editing the source code in order to add uh, networks and and application names. Uh, so I looked it up on zeek.org, you know, uh, uh, how does the input framework work? There's a great page there, basically pulled straight from its example, how you do a set. And so you define an index record and you put in an event to handle end of data. And then you, and in zeek init, you add it as a table, put that all in and oh my God, you know, when you copy people's working code, it works, fantastic. Uh, so then I, uh, wanted to read in the other file, right? So the other file is a little more hard. It's uh, you have an index and a value. Uh, and so I messed up a few times, which you won't see in like in the input files themselves. So I got those wrong. Um, and so I create a val that's a record and it's got a name, it's a string. And then now I have two possible ways to hit end of data. And so I, I handle that. And then in zkinet, I add in a table and all should be good. Well, except no, um, you know, I changed the val but i didn't actually change the declaration of table and so it was still a table of strings so that didn't work um and so then i ran it and well yeah you can't um define after you use uh the type so i had to rearrange my code to put the val where it really should be and then i had this idea that connection state remove should be optimized this was before i reran it and so i I didn't want it to end up being if then else, 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 else. So I changed it to be, you know, if something, then set something in return. If something else, then set something else in return. Uh, this may not have been the best idea. I'll talk about it more later, but um, ran that. And of course, well, I had changed the type of table, but I hadn't changed how I accessed it. So definitely, you know, pro tip, uh, when you change a the type of something, you should really go look at all of its uses because um, uh, you need to actually, in this case, index into the record to pull the value out of the, the table. So with that, it actually worked. But when I was reading zeek.org, it had warned me that uh, reading from the input framework is asynchronous. And so that to me meant that my check of, you know, are the tables the same size uh, wasn't really going to work anymore because, you know, I may have read one and not the other. It, it's going to be hard to have this, you know, make sense. So I removed that. And then thinking about it further, it's like, well, really the way to solve this is to not have two files in the first place. And in fact, there was no reason to have two data structures or files at all. And so uh, what you can do is you can just say, is a thing in a table? And what that will do is just check all the indexes and they'll give you true if it is. So I just completely got rid of nets. I got rid of IDX, I got rid of the input table um, and changed this code to just check net info. And that actually worked. So at this point, my first idea was working. And so that's very cool. There's still a bunch of infrastructure sort of around this to finish off. Um, but the question is, well, what happens? You know, there are, I don't remember, 1,000 or 8,000 uh, entries in this, this table. So it's a nice uh, source of data. Um, but 
you know, suppose it's not there. And so, so suppose the user is going to www.managemymoney.com, right? So I can really get a hint as to what they're doing from the HTTP log. And so what this says is I added in at the end, so after the other checks, um, is this an HTTP connection? That's what that uh, checking for the, the uh, question mark dollar is. You know, does this thing exist? Um, and then if it is, does it have a host? And if so, okay, that host is the name of the app. And I ran that and it worked, uh, but it was really ugly, right? So I don't want the app to be www.managemymoney.com. Um, and I already knew that something called domain TLD existed. Uh, this is a package that Seth wrote to do something with, with domain names. That was really all I knew. Uh, I hadn't used it before, but I had seen you know mention of it. And uh, so I got that with ZKG and installed it. And then at the top of the script, I add a load to say, you know, please load uh, this package for me. And then I changed my code. Oh, sorry. And then I looked at uh, the package itself to say, okay, now how do I use this, right? So um, when, when you're looking at a package, some of them have fantastic docs and you, you can just tell from the top exactly how you use it. Uh, more likely you end up scanning through, looking at uh, global functions um, to see what, uh, what, is, what your entry points are, right? what you can call. And so when I looked through it, I thought that effective domain was what I want, right? So I'm gonna pass in a whole domain name and it's gonna give me um, manage your money, right? So that was my idea. I set that up, uh, ran it. Yeah, that's not what effective domain does. Uh, I mean, maybe this is just DNF's terminology, I don't know, but uh, what this di actually did was it got rid of the www dot, but it still said dot com at the end. Uh, um, so that was pretty ugly. So I created my effective domain, which is a function that does what I thought effective domain should do. Um, and this function calls the effective domain. Uh, so that gets me the string without the beginning. Uh, but it, it doesn't do anything about the hot top level domain. And then I independently call it and get the top level domain. Uh, so that'd be .com uh, in this example. And then I do probably the sort of trickiest idea um, so far in this, this uh, script is I'm using the string as an array, right? And I'm saying, give me character zero, which is the beginning because effective domain has already dropped off the www dot. But then I, my length that I wanna to go to is the length of the whole thing minus the length of the top level stuff that I wanna get rid of and then minus one, because I started at zero. If this were, if Zeke were one based, you wouldn't have the minus one. Uh, and you've probably all seen it already, but there's a typo there, right? So that minus one should be inside the square braces, not outside. So fix that and it works. So feeling pretty good. I. Uh, Sorry, I'd already changed it to call my effective domain because uh, obviously you have to do that to hit your own function. And then I'm like, well, I've done it for HTTP. I may as well do it for SSL. So look at the SSL uh, main.zeek file and see that it identifies something called server name. So same, same trick, right? Is this SSL? If so, does it have server name? If so, um, go ahead and call my effective domain on this. And this is just uh, to another pro tip kind of thing. Like, this is a very common pattern in Zeek scripts, right? You have a lot of cases where you, you need to check if something exists to tell what kind of stream you're looking at or what kind of, of uh, events you're handling. Um, and so this question mark dollar is uh, great uh, for that. And also just as a protection against things that are null, right? So a lot of tra or traffic is very varied and some stuff you may assume you know that every SSL connection has a server name and that assumption I believe is not true so you want to make sure you check for it. Okay so with that uh, I've, I've exhausted sort of my obvious obvious ideas and I think what else can I do and Zeke has all these analyzers and what they do is annotate the con log with a service and I figured for some of the analyzers I can I can identify an app Right, so for example, if the service is POP3 or it's IMAP, I know they're doing email, right? So I'm gonna just call this email as the app. Uh, if they're doing FTP or Nutella or BitTorrent, they're doing file transfers. So they're doing a file transfer app. And there are a bunch of protocols that really aren't apps and I wanted to have a way to sort of quickly ignore them, right? So I created this app called Infra, 
that just is all the stuff that, you know, I know that I, I don't really care if, you know, this is Modbus or NTP or whatever, right? So this is not a user app kind of thing, right? So let's just call that infra and then we can not look at it. And at the very bottom, because it's a very weak signal of that same event, I put in, you know, is, is the service defined? And if so, is it one of the services that I have a map for? And then if so, grab the service and put it into the app. And I made the same mistake again, which is that the indexes when you declare a table need square braces. Uh, so I went through and you know, painfully added that to every, um, every index name. And then I made yet another mistake for the second time, which is I was pulling, if you go back, I was looking at uh, C dollar service instead of C dollar con service. So I had to change it uh, to do that. Um, and then with that, oops, with that, it actually worked. Um, so we've now successfully got three or four different ideas for how to, how to label an app and we've got a working package. So congrats. Uh, we'll see if I think of some more things before I hit the submission deadline. Um, so what, uh, what lessons do we have? So you will make mistakes. Um, you, you should expect to, and don't worry about it. Uh, if you go slowly, they won't be that hard to fix. You'll know sort of exactly what you were working on, you know, where you just made your changes and, uh, you know, you can hit your, hit your forehead with your hand and say, oh, I did the same thing again. Or I guess, whoops, I did it again. Uh, with uh, things like the indexes being in, in square braces. Um, definitely mine the existing examples, right? So all of the stuff that is shipping with Zeek is code that we know works, right? I, there could be bugs, but they're probably gonna be very subtle and you're not gonna run into a problem with them. Uh, so they're a rich source of seeing how you're supposed to do things. And also the docs are very good, right? For an open source project, it's got great docs. Um, it doesn't perhaps have the best search engine. So I usually Google uh, Zeek and what I'm looking for rather than using the zeek.org search engine. Uh, start simple, you know, start, start with uh, the base of your idea or in my case, like, you know, doing hello world is nothing to do with what I actually wanna do, but it, you know, a very, very simple thing rather than, you know, okay, I'm gonna write hundred lines of code that I think are, are my whole package and then start trying to, to test it all. Uh, and don't worry about being perfect the first time. You may have better ideas when you come back. So in my case, like when I went back and started that if else, 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 else kind of structure, uh, that was a better idea. Now, I actually may come back to that again because it's occurred to me after the fact that that's sort of fragile, right? If I forget to put in a return, then I, risk setting a higher quality signal and then having it fall through and get overwritten with a lower quality signal. So it may not actually have been a good change, but uh, don't just don't overthink it. Um, as you get better and better, you know, you will think it through a lot more uh, your first time. Um, and that's, that's good. Obviously you don't want to uh, uh, do dumb stuff and then know that you're gonna have to change it and have to change it and have to change it. Um, and speaking of changes, the typos were pretty few. Um, this is another tip. It's a lot easier to code if your editor knows something about the language you're using. Now, because I'm a dinosaur and I use Emacs, that's bro mode, which is uh, could be a lot better. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, using a raw editor that knows nothing about uh, computer languages, you know, like pure VI or whatever, uh, is a, a much more challenging way to do it. And then finally, just remember, like, I mean, you're, you're not gonna break network traffic, right? You're looking at it, but you're not gonna take your network down by having a, a mistake in your script. Um, so while you're, you're figuring it all out, uh, you know, your, your bar is not that high. So with that, I will go and join the Slack in case anybody wants to rag me about my code or make any other comments, ask any questions and enjoy the rest of the conference.